And now, please welcome Nintendo of America President and COO, Reggie fils Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us at the Nintendo All Access uh, 3DS Software Showcase at E3 2012. Wow, is that a mouthful. <laughs> As you might have seen yesterday during our Nokia presentation, someone, and I'm looking at you, Moffat, complained that he didn't have enough time to go through all of the great software and all of the information about Nintendo 3DS. Now, I think you guys know me. I normally don't like giving up the stage. But since he beat me at Mario Kart 7 once, I guess it's time to pay up. So he gets to talk about all of the great content for Nintendo 3DS coming up. OK, Moffat, the stage is yours. Take it away. Show us what you got. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Moffat. Thanks, Reggie. And I would add, uh, I beat you on Mario Kart once so far. Oh! <laughs> um, so hello, everyone. Uh, so you know, Reggie, we have um, a little bit of a surprise. We have a special guest here with us tonight who might just have a little bigger following than you. It's a guy who's been a trending topic on Twitter all week, and he's quickly building a loyal fan base. He's got his own Facebook page. He's in videos. And uh, if I can have all of your help, he's a little shy, and he doesn't speak much. But if I can uh, have your help, let's give a, a warm welcome to <laughs> non non-specific action figure. If you didn't. <laughs> If you didn't see his performance in the Nintendo Direct video on Sunday, he had an Oscar-worthy performance, and uh, he's going to be joining us here tonight. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. <laughs> he, is, he is a little bit delicate. So, so hang on a minute, Scott. So at least I don't need a sword to kick ass and take names, all right? <laughs> all right. So uh, <laughs> I, I can't top that. Uh, <laughs> so let me add my warm welcome to all of you here tonight, uh, as well as to everyone joining us online at e3.nintendo.com, as, well as well as those of you on Facebook and Twitter. Now, here at E3, I can't walk 10 feet without picking up uh, another group of me's in Street Pass. And as this room was filling up, I was uh, sitting over there checking my me plaza, and I've added about a dozen new me's from you guys alone. And I think that one in the middle is supposed to be me. I'm not sure how much it looks like me or not. But uh, fair warning, I think um, my me has now invaded some of your plazas as well. And uh, I'll give you a fair warning, he can be a little ruly and likes, unruly and likes loud music. So here at E3, thousands of people have already gotten their hands on many of these great new games, both at the Nintendo booth and, as, and at the booths of our third party partners on the show floor. And the feedback we're getting is fantastic. And one thing that we're hearing loud and clear is that people wanted to know more. So the great news is, I've got more. <laughs> Today, we're focusing exclusively on Nintendo D uh, 3DS. And we'll have live demos, we'll have videos, we've got special guests, and we'll be revealing some things that you haven't yet seen or heard about uh, including everything from Mario to Dracula. So yesterday, we gave you a glimpse of a few Nintendo 3DS games. And now, we're going to spend the next hour or so taking a closer look at a bunch of them. So let's jump right in. Now, millions of people already know that the best portable gaming content is found on Nintendo systems. We want to thank our fans for having such a great reaction to games like Super Mario 3D Land, Mario Kart, Mario Kart 7, and The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time 3D. 
I've been spending a lot of time with a lot of those games, and I've played all the way through Super Mario 3D Land a couple of times, and I know many, many of you are playing it too, because I see it in your activities on Street Pass. So as we're going to show you here tonight, throughout the presentation, third-party publishers are also creating great content for Nintendo 3DS. Companies are rolling out their big guns to be a part of the Nintendo 3DS experience. And one name that has long been associated with Nintendo systems is Castlevania. Let's take a look at what the folks at Konami have been working on. My father came to this castle many years ago when I was but a child. He came to destroy the evil that lives here. He never returned. I have carried this small piece of mirror since I was a boy. It is said it comes from a magical mirror, capable of showing your past and true fate. You have seen it, Marie. The mirror has shown you Gabriel's fate. You must protect the child from his father. Trevor and his lineage will be the only ones capable of facing him in the future. Your son's survival is the only hope for humanity. If I have not returned by dawn, take the boy and leave this place far behind. Take to the forest. Do not look for me. Come back to us, my love. That's the battle cross my father carried. Who are you? This I promise. You shall not stand alone against him. <laughs> you fight well. Worthy of the name Belmont. <laughs> Second chance, Father. Konami. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome producer Konami Digital Entertainment, Dave Cox. Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight I'm going to run you through some of the highlights of our playable demo for Castlevania Lords of Shadow, Mirror of Fate. Now this is an exclusive title for the Nintendo 3DS and it's due out here in the fall. And it's currently under development in Spain at Mercury Steam. This game will be a brand new game in the rebooted Lords of Shadow universe. And in this demo you control Trevor Belmont. Now, he's a powerful warrior on a quest to confront the evil responsible for the murder of his mother. Armed with your combat cross, which is a chain whip weapon, you can deal lots of damage to the unholy creatures of the night that dare stand in your way. And you have at your disposal lots of powerful whip attacks to dispatch them in spectacular style. It's just as well as you're going to meet some very tough adversaries on your epic quest. These skeletons, for example. Or indeed, hulking animated armors, such as this chap. Or bigger, more formidable foes, like this giant executioner boss. You have direct attacks for one-on-one -on -one mayhem. They're good for inflicting a ton of damage. Or you can use area attacks for more effective crowd control, though it does less damage. To support your combat skills, you have dark magic. This is powers up your attacks by increasing the damage. However, you need to be careful because it runs out very quickly. You can also grab enemies by using the R button on the 3DS. 
And this is good for finishing off troublesome foes. Use it often, as it can quickly turn the tide of battle in your favour. If you play well, enemies will drop magical energy. This fills up your magic bar to maintain your magical abilities for longer. As you can see, by pressing the L button on the 3DS, you can block or sync block enemy attacks, thus leaving them open to devastating counter-attacks. Of course, another cool feature we have are secondary weapons. And in this demo, we give you a chance to try out the boomerang. This secondary weapon is extremely powerful and can really help you in a jam. Use your secondary weapons strategically and save them for key moments in the game, because they can really make the difference between life and death. The boomerang sticks to enemies and causes damage over time. And it's really useful for using from distance, like this. And you can also charge it up for one big hit of energy. Though you're vulnerable whilst doing so, it's, very, it's good to mix up various styles of attack, so use your secondary weapons to quickly and easily take down your enemies. Then grab them, just to finish them off, and you're good to go. You can replenish your secondary weapons by breaking barrels and other objects in the environments and collecting the hearts that lie inside. Of course, another key component of Castlevania games is platforming. You can swing across gaps by pressing the R button on the 3DS and latching onto the glowing grip points. Trevor's no slouch when it comes to getting around the game's many environments. One ability is the double jump, and it's useful for reaching out of reach places. Latch onto the grip points in the game to lower yourself down or reach otherwise inaccessible areas by starting your whip swing again. Jumping and swinging feel really natural in this game and give players fantastic freedom to explore Dracula's immense castle. And there's going to be four playable characters in the game, including the newly revealed Alucard, and each have their own unique abilities and skills. And although the game is a 2.5D perspective, we use the camera a lot to give players a feeling of really being in a 3D world. There are a lot of secrets for players to find too, and we positively encourage exploration. Lots of new items and upgrades are scattered throughout the game world for your character to find. This is an epic adventure spanning many hours, so it's crucial to use your map. Study the map carefully and make notes on places and areas of interest for later exploration. Dark dungeons, gothic cathedrals, familiar enemies, all stand in your way on this epic journey to face Dracula. You are part of the Belmont clan, and you have to go up against the dark evil of Dracula in each era if you dare. You will discover the secret of Dracula's curse, and you will discover why only the famed Belmont clan can defeat their nemesis. This Castlevania game will give you epic combat, deep exploration, challenging puzzles, and horrific enemies because the very castle itself is alive and is challenging you. The day you rise to meet it. Indeed, what is the secret of the Mirror of Fate? We're looking forward to revealing more in the not-too-distant future, but for now, check out the game here at E3. It's playable at both the Konami and Nintendo booths. Find out in Castlevania Laws of Shadow Mirror of Fate, which is exclusive for Nintendo 3DS and available in-store this fall. Appreciate you taking the time out, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Dave. Thanks a bunch, Dave. I, uh, I could use one of those chain we weapons around the office some days. So creeping through the dark, you definitely want the Belmonts by your side. But if they're not available, you might want to consider somebody who's maybe a little bit less heroic. Let's take a look.
Hello. It's a great game. It really finally gives Mario's little brother a little respect. Now Luigi can explore multiple mansions using the strobe function on his flashlight to stun ghosts. And as you may have noticed in the trailer, he has a new multicolored beam, which is useful dis for discovering hidden secrets in the environment. Luigi's Mansion launches this holiday season, both in stores as well as a download in the Nintendo eShop. And we're making the trailer you just saw available in the eShop right now. So we've started with some rather spooky stuff. Vampires, ghosts, and other specters. Now, it's my great pleasure to conjure up another kind of specter, specifically the creative force behind the Disney Epic Mickey franchise, Warren Spector, joined by Peter Ong. So the last time I spoke at a Nintendo E3 event, we were months away from the release of Disney Epic Mickey for Wii, a game that reminded people that Mickey Mouse could be a mischief maker, an adventurer, and a hero. Today, thanks to the success of that game, I'm here to talk about something new, Disney Epic Mickey Power of Illusion on the Nintendo 3DS. It's not a sequel, it's not a port, it's an entirely new standalone experience that introduces something new to the world of Wasteland forgotten video game history. The story of how video games came to Wasteland is an interesting one, but rather than listening to me talk about it, let's hear about it from the guy who suggested the idea, Peter Ong, creative director at Dreamrift Studios. Thanks, Warren. About a year ago, Dreamrift was, working, was looking for a new project. Our last game, Monster Tale, on the Nintendo DS allowed us to continue working on the kind of deep interactions between the top and bottom screen that I think is what we like to explore as a developer. We were actually working on a concept that would allow players to draw things on the bottom touch screen and to have those things appear on the top screen. But we didn't know what we were quite going to do fictionally around that idea. But when we got the call from Disney to talk about a Disney Epic Mickey game, a lot of things just fell into place. Yeah, they, they fell into place pretty quickly, too. We'd spoken to a few developers about developing a handheld game set in Wasteland featuring Mickey and Oswald. But our search for a partner ended when we had our first meeting with Peter here. I mean, he came in, as he just said, with a pitch for a game involving drawing and erasing. <laughs> what could be better than that for a Disney Epic Mickey game? And when we were talking, we discovered that he was a huge Disney fan, he and his team. So uh, I guess it makes sense, given that they're based in Orlando, Florida. Oh, yeah, I think that's a really happy coincidence. But it's uh, true that we're all big Disney fans at Dream Rift, the movies, the parks, and, of course, the video games. I had played Disney Epic Mickey and I loved it, uh, but I've been a Disney f game fan since I was a kid and a fan of one game in particular. When I was a boy, one of my rituals was to beat the classic 1990 Mickey Mouse game, Castle of Illusion, at least once every day. Yes, once every day. <laughs> and I've actually drawn on Castle of Illusion for inspiration in every game that I've worked on in my career. When the opportunity to work on a Disney game came around, one set in Wasteland, a world of forgotten and rejected Disney history, I saw an opportunity to make a game that wasn't just inspired by Castle of Illusion, but one that also allowed players to explore the castle again, and in ways that they never could before, thanks to the power of paint and thinner and the capabilities of the Nintendo 3DS. So maybe we should stop talking for a little while and uh, take a look at the game, okay? Absolutely. Before we do, well, wait a minute, how about telling a little bit about the story and the setup? What do you do here? Sure, Warren. Uh, Power of Illusion begins with the appearance of the Castle of Illusion in Wasteland. And the castle, in the castle are characters like Minnie Mouse and other beloved, definitely not forgotten characters. How they got there is a mystery for now. And so is the identity of a mysterious witch in the castle holding Minnie and the others prisoner. The evil witch is, of course, Miserable from the original Castle of Illusion game. And she's hatched a scheme to get out of Wasteland. She's imprisoned popular characters there before their time to steal their heart essence, returning herself and the castle to the cartoon world. Mickey's job, and the player's job, is to stop Miserable, of course, and rescue the trapped tunes. So that's the background. And let's take a look at the game itself now.
So that's a quick uh, look at the game. And uh, all of us at Dreamrift are grateful for the opportunity to honor Mickey Mouse and the Castle of Illusion, and maybe even add something new to Disney's history. We hope that our love for these things and for the original Castle of Illusion game comes through when you play the game when it releases this holiday season. So I hope you can see why everyone at Junction Point at Disney is excited about the latest addition to the Disney Epic Mickey universe. We've introduced an entirely new world of lost Disney video game history. We brought back a classic Disney villain, Miserable, from a classic Disney game, Castle of Illusion. We've offered creative paint and thinner play that's entirely different from what we offered on the Wii. And we've brought the world of Wasteland to the Nintendo 3DS. Peter and I hope you enjoyed this look at Disney Epic Mickey Power of Illusion. And uh, thanks, and have a great E3. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So thanks, Warren, and thanks, Peter. It's always interesting to see a new take on a familiar franchise. And we want to thank you and, and all the folks at Disney for all your efforts in supporting Nintendo franchises. Now, Warren showed us how a classic Disney game is being reborn with new characters and features. And now we move from the magic of the paintbrush to the power of paper. Let's take a closer look at Paper Mario Sticker Star. And as many of you know, it's the first time that this series is available on a portable system. Yesterday at the Nokia show, I mentioned how the new sticker system adds new strategy to both gameplay as well as to battles. So here to take us a bit deeper into the game and walk us through some levels is Nate Bildorf from our treehouse. Nate, take it away. Thanks, Scott. Hi, everybody. I'm going to play some video games here now. Uh, so Scott just mentioned that this is the first Paper Mario um, to appear on a handheld, and it was really made to appear on this handheld. Um, everything about the Paper Mario aesthetic, from you know foldable characters to pop-up scenery, it all contributes to the feeling of like a living, breathing diorama that's living inside your 3DS. I know you can't see it from where you're sitting, but trust me, it really, really pops. Um, and just uh, before I really get into this, uh, a little bit about me. Um, I, this franchise holds a very special place in my heart. The North American localization of the original Paper Mario for the N64 was actually the first game that I ever did the English writing for. And I've worked on every game in the series since, so I love it. Um, Intelligent Systems has always packed these games full of hilarious characters, really, really creative and unique scenarios. Um, and this one is no different in that sense. Um, but what they've also done is they've always done something new for each iteration. Um, and in this particular case, that's something new is stickers. Um, I'm going to give you a little preview. This guy just ambushed me while I was talking, so I'm going to uh, wail on him really quickly. Ignore what you're seeing here, because I'll be describing it in great detail in one moment. Yeah, that, that didn't just happen. This guy's just going to real quick. Okay. And yes, we're done with that. All right, so stickers, that's what I was talking about. They're everywhere in this game. Uh, they're stuck to walls, they're behind bushes, they are carried by enemies. Um, you really have to scour the environment for them because they are uh, your bread and butter in the game. You can actually see here, Bowser used a little piece of like police tape sticker to hold down a piece of the environment to try to prevent me from getting up here, but of course he failed. Um, you're really going to need stickers for everything, and the most important thing you'll need them for is battling. So now I'll get into a real battle, uh, the way I meant to before. So you can see this is very familiar for Paper Mario Vets, right? Um, it's a turn-based battle system where you'll see guys wandering around the stage. You can get in fights with them if you start the fight effectively by jumping on them. Obviously, you get the first hit in. Um, if not, it's, it goes rather poorly for you. But once you get in here, it's, it's time to, to pick, your, pick your battles, basically. And ordinarily in a Paper Mario game, you would pick from a menu here of, of attacks. But here, stickers control the entire show. Offensive, defensive, everything. And you can see down here on the bottom screen, I got a whole album full of them. Um, I'm not going to tell you what that door does right now. Instead, I'll just uh, do a typical jump on this guy. And uh, the action battle system remains and is as good as ever. You have to be paying attention at all times. The timely button presses allowed me to just wail on that guy and then allowed me to block the attacks. Um, obviously, I still took a little damage, but it allowed me to lessen the attacks of these, uh, these Goombas. And strategy comes into play big time. So, you know, for this one, I, I don't want to absorb any more attacks, so I'm going to actually use an attack that I think can probably take care of both of them at the same time. A couple of good time presses and 
wipe them out with a Koopa shell. Um, battles will produce coins. They'll produce more stickers. Um, in this case, I got some coins. Both of those uh, you need to collect a lot of over the course of this game for reasons that I'll explain in just a little bit. Uh, first, I want to show you another element of this game. You can see over here this fan. This does not look like it lives in a paper world. This actually looks like it was ripped directly out of our world. And there are a number of items like this uh, in the game. All of them are important for, for very sort of specific reasons that I'll get into later. Um, but you really want to scour every single environment to see how many of them you can find. All right, now uh, indulge me for a second while I run back over here and uh, take a look at that area I was in before. You saw before when I went up here that there was a big breeze blowing. That's because the fan was on. I turned the fan off, so now everything's mellow over here. But the casualties were this toad's flowers, um, which he lost. Uh, and I can help him out. I mean, it's kind of funny that he's there crying, but I think I'm going to be nice to him instead. Um, and I'm going to, to do that, I'm going to use a, a power called paperization. By hitting the Y button here, I just froze the scene and turned it sideways. And you can do this anywhere. Um, you can take a look at whatever's in the environment. In this particular case, you can see that there's some spots down there that uh, look like they could use some stickers. So, of course, this guy lost some flowers. So I'll use some of my attack flowers here to see if I can replace them. Got to stick it on there nice and good. That's an that's a ice flower. And then um, maybe do a fire flower here. And then uh, I'll finish it off with a, I'll do a shiny fire flower. Shiny ones, of course, for those of you who are avid sticker collectors, shiny is better. All right, so those look like they're taking root there and Flowers. And you can see it didn't just bloom his flowers, it actually threw up a whole bunch of stickers that I can collect to replenish what I just kind of spent on him. Um, and even more so, I got, you know, I, I used three and got six back. Um, more importantly, this guy is so psyched that I helped him out that he's actually giving me a really important item. This is a, an HP up heart. And this is actually going to boost my maximum HP. Now, those of you guys who are vets of the series probably noticed in that earlier battle that I didn't actually get any experience points, um, which is weird. Uh, for the Paper Mario series, you're obviously used to, to getting experience points. You're still going to have this sort of RPG leveling up um, experience in this game, but it's going to be gotten in a different way. You have to solve people's problems, like I just did on oh, losing all those stickers. Um, you have to, you know, solve puzzles in the environment. You have to scour all these areas to find hidden nooks and crannies and um, find secret sticker caches. Um, you really just need to look around, and that's the way that you're going to boost your, your album size, you're going to boost Mario's health, you're going to boost your attacks. So pardon me for, well, for a second, I'm going to use a little bit of magic of pre-production software to uh, jump to another area. Obviously won't be able to do this in the final game. Um, now I am actually right outside of the main town in the game. And uh, this area features this very perky toad who has a, a stall that does um, a very, has a very, very important role in the game. So when you're going through and you're collecting these real world items, you can eventually bring them back to this spot and maybe some other spots in the game. This guy's got a great stall, and he's uh, instructing me to sling my thing up there. Now you can see I actually have more than just the fan in my inventory. I got a couple things here. Uh, those, all, <laughs> those are all wonderful items, and there are a ton of them in the game, but I'm going to use the fan for now, huck it up there, and turn it into a sticker. And now you can see that, that's a big sticker. Um, it takes up a lot of space in my inventory, so you're going to have to manage your sticker loadout, as it were. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it should be big because it's really, really powerful. If I use that in battle, it would completely destroy whoever uh, I was using it on. But typically, these special items also have a very, very specific purpose in advancing the, the story of the game. So um, I'm once again going to use magic and hop out to where we can uh, make use of this fan. Well, hopefully that guy's not gonna get to, no, don't attack me. All right, so here we have a windmill. Uh, there's no wind. So let's uh, go into paperizing mode. And you can see there's a spot for a big old sticker there. So we'll, we'll pop the fan on. Stick it down, let's see what happens. Problem solved. They told me I wasn't allowed to make a Mario's biggest fan joke here. 
I thought it was good. I... <laughs> anyway, so you can see uh, now the blades have turned, and I can actually access this windmill. It, it's not only sort of obvious spots like that that you'll want to paperize and use stickers. Um, you really want to look anywhere suspicious in the world. There's a lot of places where even a small sticker, you know, an ordinary jump sticker might net you something cool. Um, you're really just going to have to explore the world to find those spots. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to go in there uh, because there are spoilers in there and you guys don't want to see too many of those. Instead, I want to just pick one more fight here and show you one other really, really important mechanic. So there's, there's not a ton of dudes in this, in this fight. There's only two of them. But you are going to run into pretty big battles in this game with you know, five Goombas at a time or you know, a really, really massive enemy that can do a ton of damage to you if he can attack. And in these instances, you're really going to want to use more than one sticker per turn. Um, and to do so, you're going to have to spend some coins, which is why you want to collect a lot of coins. Uh, and you have to have a little bit of luck. So by using the battle spinner down here, um, I'm going to try to hit a jackpot. Come on. Oh, all right. Well, I didn't hit a jackpot, but I got two at least. If I'd hit, if I'd hit all three coins right there, I essentially would have gotten showered with coins as well as getting to use three stickers on this particular turn. Um, as it happens, I can at least use two of them. So why don't we do... Uh, I'll chuck a hammer at this guy and then use a slap hammer on this other one. That'll do. Just own that guy really quick. So, so a lot of the strategy comes down to how you're going to manage your stickers when you have a whole bunch of guys in a line. Um, it's really, really crucial that, well, you get lucky a little bit, but also that you uh, use your, your coins wisely over the course of the game. Um, there's a ton more that I can talk about, but I am actually out of time up here, so hopefully this taste is going to um, hold you over until a later date. But for now, I'm going to turn it back over to Scott. Thanks a bunch, Nate. And uh, as Nate knows, I was uh, a couple weeks ago I was hanging out in the treehouse, and I got to play that game. And uh, it's, there's a ton of fun surprises in, uh, in there. And you won't, for those of you that love this series and love that game, you won't have to wait long. Paper Mario Sticker Star launches this holiday season. And once again, you can check out a 3D trailer for the game in the Nintendo eShop right now. So with all the great games that are on their way, for Nintendo 3DS. We could spend hours going through them all. But we've picked out just a few more from our third party partners to feature. Starting with an action adventure that features two worlds of great characters all in one game. So when Square Enix meets Disney, that can only mean one thing, Kingdom Hearts. Let's take a look. It's not safe for you here. Listen to Jiminy and go back to Oh my! Three meters! Look at that boy's weapon. It's different. Oh! So Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance features Street Pass functionality, Dream Eaters to unlock using AR cards, and support for the Circle Pad Pro. It also includes a slew of first-time features, such as Flow Motion 
for fast and effortless movement that can be tied to powerful finishing moves, and reality shift to execute various attacks by responding to touchscreen commands. It's an action RPG that takes a unique approach to beloved Disney characters and worlds. Kingdom Hearts 3D launches July 31st, and a demo is coming soon to the Nintendo eShop. Next, we turn to Warner Brothers and a resourceful little guy named Maxwell. Fans of the Scribblenaut series know the game will create almost any object you can think of. Previous versions added the ability to include adjectives as well as descriptions. So let's take a look at Scribblenauts. So Scribblenauts Unlimited adds a new feature. Instead of a series of one-off puzzles, Maxwell wanders around an unbound world and helps solve problems. So as I mentioned, there are a lot more adventures to come from our third-party partners. Here's just a taste of some of the other games that are on their way for Nintendo 3DS. Let's roll the video. <laughs> So I also want to remind everyone that we are just a few months away from the launch of what is sure to be a powerhouse handheld duo in 2012, Pokemon Black version 2 and Pokemon White version 2. These new successors to the record-breaking Pokemon Black and White games return players to the Unova region two years after the events of the first games. These games are developed for Nintendo DS but in just a bit, we'll touch on ways that Nintendo 3DS users can get the most out of these new games. Now, so far, we've primarily discussed games that are available as package purchases from stores. But as many 3DS owners know, the Nintendo eShop has quickly become a great source for all kinds of downloadable content. In fact, according to Metacritic, some of the highest rated Nintendo 3DS games can be found in the eShop, which, by the way, is celebrating its one-year anniversary today. Now, people who have decided to buy a game in the Nintendo eShop end up buying an average of 4.7 games. To get the most out of your 3DS, make sure you're going online and checking out eShop, Nintendo Video, and all the other connected features. In North America alone, more than 70% of owners have connected their systems to the internet. Worldwide, you Nintendo 3DS owners have sent more than 58 million swap note messages via SpotPass. And of all the items in the Nintendo eShop, five have been downloaded more than a million times in the US alone. If you take a look at these five behind me on the screen, they tell an interesting story about Nintendo eShop and how people are using their 3DS systems for all kinds of activities beyond just gaming. Nintendo Video, as many of you are aware, is our free video service that offers hand-picked 3D videos 
to Nintendo 3DS owners in a variety of categories such as Hollywood, uh, Hollywood comedy, animation, gaming, and music. Total Nintendo videos in North America are more than 60 million in less than a year. And we're looking forward to further increasing the creativity on Nintendo video. I'm happy to announce here for you today that the original series, 3D It's, will premiere with a special preview episode. It's an action and comedy filled adventure series, which is frankly a little too wacky and wonderful for me to describe. You'll just have to watch it for yourself. Let's take a quick look. What happened to you? Spill it! <laughs> When I'm done with you, your widow and slaves will need to bury you in two coffins. All right, that sounds delicious. <laughs> I warned you, it's a little zany. So there will be shrinking humans, vengeful lobstermen, 3D effects, and as you saw already, lots of gratuitous explosions. We hope you like it. It's uh, available on Nintendo Video right now. So just a few weeks ago, we announced that both Pokemon Dream Radar as well as Pokedex 3D Pro will be available as digital downloads exclusively in the Nintendo eShop coming this fall. So with Pokemon Dream Radar, po players can use their 3DS systems to catch hard-to-find Pokemon, then transfer them to Pokemon Black version 2 and White version 2. In addition, the Pokedex 3D Pro includes the data for every single known Pokemon, making it a must-have for all Pokemon fans. Both of these new games are going to, both of these new games are really going to enhance the overall experience for people playing Pokemon Black and White 2 on their Nintendo 3DS. This summer, we'll have even more demos, including some for the games you see here on the screen behind me. Now, I also want to mention the Lego Batman series. Lego Batman, the video game, is the best-selling Lego video game of all time. In the upcoming sequel, Lego Batman 2, DC superheroes, the dynamic duo joins forces with other famous heroes, including Superman, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern, to stop Lex Luthor and the Joker from destroying Gotham City. I'm happy to announce that we'll be making a demo of LEGO Batman 2, also available to Nintendo 3DS owners, and you, you can find it in the eShop, you guessed it, right now. So go check it out. So the Nintendo eShop and our other services are keeping people clearly engaged with their systems every day. The Nintendo eShop is also starting to bridge that gap between packaged and downloadable games. In fact, many of you probably saw the announcement from Mr. Iwata a couple weeks ago where he revealed in the future, if you want to buy a, three, a new Nintendo published 3DS game, you can either go to a retail store and buy it as usual, or just download the game directly from the eShop. You can also go to participating retailers, figure out what you want to buy, and purchase a download code. So we're giving you lots of options to acquire and enjoy your favorite 3DS content. And as Mr. Iwata also mentioned, New Super Mario Bros. 2 will be the very first major game that you can enjoy and purchase in one of these, any of these new ways. We got a little taste of New Super Mario Bros. yesterday, and as you saw, there are coins literally everywhere in this game. And every coin you collect moves you one step closer to that million coin goal. So let me turn it back over to Nate and let him take you through more detail, tell you about some of the great features that you haven't seen yet. Nate, JC, take it away. Thanks, Scott. Hello again. Uh, they let me drag JC up this time to play uh, while I talk, because when I try to play flat, fast twitch platformers and talk at the same time, I plunge directly into pits or walk into the first Goomba in the level, and it's really embarrassing. So JC is going to plug along here while I talk uh, and tell you about this game. So yeah, this game is, is all about coins. They're the name of the game. Um, but 
don't get me wrong, there's uh, everything you would expect out of a full-fledged Mario game. There's tons of power-ups. There is pitch-perfect platforming, long single-player campaign. But where you're used to seeing um, some coins, you're now going to see tons of coins, though you're not seeing them right now. You're just seeing a logo. How's it look? Good. <laughs> a lot of coins up there. <laughs> All right, so now, now we'll see some real coins. Um, they're in blocks, they are in the sky, they're underground, they're fountaining out of random areas of the environment. Um, and uh, you'll even see, you may have seen that, this actually in the trailer yesterday, there are actually rings in the environment that you can jump through that turn all the enemies into gold. Um, this is a good thing. Whenever you do that, uh, you know, if you kill a piranha plant, the pipe is going to fountain out coins. Um, if you hit a Koopa shell and then kick it, it's going to leave a trail of coins behind it. Um, you can actually even get a power-up that helps you do this. This is the golden fire flower that you're about to see. There it is. Get this thing and you turn it into an unstoppable cash-making machine. Everything that you shoot, enemies, bricks, walls, it doesn't matter. It's, you're basically, uh, you have the power to monetize anything and everything in your world, which we can all agree is a, is a good skill to have. Um, all this, uh, you know, it, it has in-game benefits. Obviously, you get one-ups and stuff like that. Um, and it all, you can, it all contributes to a counter that keeps track of how many coins you get over the course of the life of your game. But it also uh, performs a very specific function in a new mode. Uh, this is an awesome new mode called Coin Rush. And I'm going to describe it while JC plays. He's probably going to finish this level while I talk about it. But it's kind of impossible to demo because it involves Street Pass, so bear with me. So, you beat a level like JC just did, and it essentially goes into your Coin Rush bank. So any level that you've beaten in the game is going to be available in Coin Rush mode. And it's grouped into a pack. So you'll have, basically, packs are like rough difficulty levels. So when you want to play Coin Rush, you're going to pick one of these packs, and the game is going to pick three levels for you to play. Uh, it's basically going to look the same as when you played through in the single player mode, but um, there will be a few additions. It definitely behooves you to study where the coins are when you're playing through the regular game because in coin rush mode, you have to get every coin you possibly can. Um, it behooves you to watch where all the one-ups are as well because in coin rush mode, these are actually golden mushrooms, which will be worth 50 coins, which is a good thing. And you really need to speed run because you, every second that you have at the end of a level is going to get converted into coins at the end. I also should mention that you only have one life in this mode, so the second you die while you're playing it, that's it. It's over. Uh, presumably you're really, really good at this and you actually get through the three levels and you end up with a nice shiny coin total. Uh, at that point, it goes into your street pass bank. So at that point, I would walk past JC and he would street pass me his, his coin rush total and come up in my menu and I could click on it and I would automatically start playing these three levels, all the while with his coin total up there taunting me uh, about how many coins he would manage to put together over the course of the three levels. Uh, it is a very simple concept. You guys would be surprised at how quickly you can become enraged at your buddy's ability to wring four more coins out of this level, or these three levels, than you are. Um, and it also very, very quickly improves your, your speed running skills because you gotta, do, you gotta get a lot of coins and you gotta get a, a lot of them fast. So fortunately, it's not all about being enraged at your buddies. Uh, I, I can also announce today um, another excellent uh, addition to this game, which is the ability to play the entire single player game with a buddy. So, I'm going to attempt to do this and not die immediately while I talk a little bit about it. Um, so yeah, those of you who played the original game on DS know that there was multiplayer in that as well, but it was confined to a battle mode. This is the full game, so we can go trucking along. Now, bear in mind, we're not allowed, I can't just go running off on my own here. We're not split up over the course of the level because the camera is tied to whatever bro is in the lead. So I need to kind of keep up with, with JC here and not, not perish immediately. There we go. And uh, you guys can see we, of course, have the raccoon tails from uh, the original Super Mario Brothers 3. I heard from the cheer yesterday that you guys were kind of psyched that you could fly again in this game. Um, I know that it was disappointing to some of you that you couldn't do it in 3D land, but it is back in all of its glory here. It lends a ton of verticality to the levels, um, and it also adds a ton of leaving your buddy behind to get helplessly bubbled the way JC just did to me. Um, so obviously if you die or get left behind, this is what happens to you and you get to wallow in shame while your buddy plays through the level ahead of you. So whether or not you uh, choose to play cooperatively 
or competitively, um, I think you guys will find that this game is a, a ton of fun, regardless of whether or not you want to antagonize your friends while you're doing it. Um, personally, I think we better stop playing this now before I kill JC. So uh, I am going to shut this off and turn it back over to Scott. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks again, Nate, and thanks, JC. I uh, had also gotten some hands-on time with that game myself, and it's a ton of fun. So for those of you here at E3, the gold rush is on. For the first time, we're going to make New Super Mario Bros. 2 playable in our booth all day tomorrow. So for those of you at home, I apologize. You're just going to have to keep an eye out for hands-on coverage of this golden game and uh, watch the reviews coming from those of you that get to play it here. So New Super Mario Bros. 2 launches August 19th, both as a package game as well as a digital download. Now last year we delivered games like Mario Kart 7 and Super Mario 3D Land. And these, gave, these games gave everyone the excuse they needed to get their hands on a Nintendo 3DS system. The good news for all of us is we've got more on the way, lots more. Month after month, week after week, we're bringing you top quality games for Nintendo 3DS. In fact, the second half of this year, this year is going to be incredible. Keep an eye out for all of these great games on the screen behind me and more. Nintendo games, third party games, as well as Nintendo eShop content will, all, will make us all glad that we're 3DS owners. So, boss, what do you think? Was that worth an extra hour? So you get a uh, Nintendo of America specific president, big thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all. I hope you had a little fun here tonight. We've got one more day of this great E3 show to go. I know I've got a ton of me's in my plaza, and I'm going to be walking around the show floor seeing if I can get to the next, uh, next thousand hurdle. So I hope you're all excited about the great things to come for Nintendo 3DS. Thanks again to our third party partners for joining us here today. And thanks to all of you for taking a look at what Nintendo 3DS has in store for the future. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the show. Mm -hmm.